G'day everyone, welcome back to the round three edition of Just The Tips. I had a solid round of tipping. Let me know in the comments how you went. I got six out of eight. I think that's generally solid. Three quarters of my tips, right? You know, that's decent. Uh, had a horrific start. Got the first two wrong, then got everything right after that. So let's be specific. I, you know, I copped some heat for not tipping the Saints. And, uh, you know, I just backed in the pies to undo their bad start of the season. Didn't happen, so I got that wrong. Tipped the Crows at home to the Cats. Knew it would be a tough game. Thought the Crows would win. After that, I got everything right, which is a relief, to be honest. And it looks like a lot of people did well this round. We will go through all the uh, the winners for this particular round. But Fremantle, thankfully, proved me right. I did have a little bit of a feeling that North were going to play well. And to be fair, they did. Uh, and the other one that I really wasn't sure about was the Dogs and the Suns. And the Dogs pulled out a really, really strong performance, actually. Credit to them. That was really impressive. Everything else more or less played out how I'd expected it. So six out of eight, that's pretty solid. And uh, let's quickly go through how everyone else did. Remember, we got two footy tipping competitions, one for members, one for the general public, as it were. And we also have a fantasy competition. So before I name the winners, just make sure if you want to be part of these competitions, you still can. Everything is in the description of this video. So we'll go through who won the rounds first. So in our members competition, it was random Aussie things. So shout out random Aussie things. And you got eight with a margin of six. Also check out the Instagram profile, random Aussie things. Same bloke, really cool channel about random Aussie things. Uh, and the general footy tipping competition winner uh, was Max underscore Watto, who got the margin right and a perfect eight out of eight. So well done, Max. Then we got the same bloke, my arch rival, Graz, who's winning the members tipping competition and the general tipping competition. So well done, Graz. That's the scores of 18 and a cumulative margin of 25. If you remember last week, there was a weird glitch with the scoring. Everyone had higher scores. That seems to be corrected. 18 is now the top of the list. And the leader of our fantasy competition is Nigel H with an impressive average of 2033. I had a horrific round this week. I got 1764. I was kind of hoping that everyone did poorly, but no, I think I just suck at fantasy. Yeah, bad round. Um, Caulfield's injury um, is unfortunate for a number of reasons, but also scoring two sent me back a tiny little bit. But either way, I would have had a bad round anyway. So it's time to get into our round three tips. I'm feeling confident about this round, which is ominous. That's probably a bad way to feel. It means that there's probably going to be a number of upsets to mess it around. But I feel like I feel like I have a good read on these teams, and I think this round is going to be easy to tip. Before I get into it, though, please enjoy this message from the sponsor of this video. If you're someone who's always wanted to start investing, but has found it difficult with the current pressures of cost of living, thankfully now there is an easy way to get started. New Venture Wealth is helping everyday Australians gain instant access to their superannuation so they can invest in assets like cryptocurrency, shares, and property. They simplify the process and guide you on how to set up a self-managed super fund, allowing you to instantly access your superannuation and start investing right away. And the best part is you can use your superannuation balance for all the setup costs of your very own self-managed super fund. Getting started is as easy as visiting the New Venture Wealth website with the link below. You can book a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of their team, or if you prefer, you can call them directly on 1300 050 939 for more information. Now there is an added bonus here because if you are a True Footy subscriber, you can use the discount code 20 off when you complete your online application. I would highly recommend visiting their website. Like I said, link in the description below, or if you prefer, you can call them directly and you can speak to a consultant who can help you better understand what's involved. All right, we're back at it again with the grand final replay here on Squiggle. Um, this will be, you know, we, we all thought this would be a mouthwatering contest and in some ways it is just for different reasons, right? So Brisbane playing Collingwood, you know, normally would be, wow, how's this going to shape the premiership race? And now we're thinking, well, to what extent are these teams out of contention? Now, I think the question marks on Collingwood are a little bit stronger than they are on Brisbane, in fairness. Uh, you know, Brisbane's had... You know, a, a disappointing second half against Carlton. Um, you know, they'd be unhappy with that, but they also didn't look horrific. You know, they got eight goals in front. And uh, and then against Fremantle, we're still getting a read on Fremantle. So we don't really know where Brisbane's at. And this will be an interesting litmus test against the side in Collingwood, who we know is quality, who has not performed well at all this year. Heaps of criticism. Could be a bad time to play them. Who knows? But either way, at least one of these teams will be winless going into round four, which is just incredible. You know, if there's a draw, they both go in winless. Now, analyzing this actual matchup, you know, I think regardless, you know, if this season had started predictably for both of these clubs, I always would have thought that Brisbane would have the edge of the Gabba. I think Collingwood hasn't won there since 2019. And uh, there's also the fact that Brisbane have a really good record against Collingwood. Other, other than the grand final, which, you know, could have gone either way. It was a really good game. Other than that, Brisbane, I think, have won, like, the six of the previous seven or some, some crazy stat like that. So, 
there's a lot to be said here for Brisbane having the upper hand. And I would also argue that the form hasn't been quite as jarringly off as Collingwood so far. But that doesn't mean they're guaranteed to win this game. Nonetheless, I think I'm going to go conservative here. I feel fairly confident that Brisbane Lions will win. Like I said, they've got history on their side. They've got the home ground advantage. They have looked a little bit closer to their level than Collingwood, but neither side has looked great this year. So I'll tip the Brisbane Lions, and I'll tip them by four goals, and that will really ramp up the pressure on Collingwood. Next, we've got North Melbourne versus Carlton. Um, Now, this one, you know, last year, if it was at the end of last year, I would have been very, very confident in Carlton smashing them. Now, obviously, I I still rate Carlton as one of the best sides in the competition. By the way, I have my power rankings coming out tomorrow. But, you know, I think North Melbourne early in the season so far have looked improved on last year for sure. And, uh, you know, getting a little bit of more depth in the midfield, some of these middle aged tier guys like Tom Powell in particular, really starting to come up and and even the load out. And and George Wardlaw just got a rising star nomination. So North Melbourne are more equipped for this game than, you know, they have been for a while. So tough one. You know, North got five goals up against Fremantle. Um, you know, at Marvel Stadium, obviously Fremantle came back and won. Again, we're still getting a read on Fremantle. Like I keep saying, I, hard to really project where that result sits. Um, they'll be disappointed with the second half, but can take a lot of positives out of the first half. And Carlton is coming off the bye. And, you know, I think they've still got some injury issues. They've played well with the injuries that they've had, to be completely honest. Beating Brisbane at the Gabba, great comeback. And then, you know, overcoming a, a pretty strong and resilient Richmond. Not trying to over-exaggerate, you know, Richmond as a quality of opponent. It's, it's hard. I just think Richmond played really well that day. Not really sure if um, them being closer than expected is a mark against Carlton. The buy here is an interesting variable. Either way, I've probably talked about this game long enough because I feel pretty confident that Carlton should get the better of North Melbourne. It's a tough fixture. And I'll tip them by six goals. Fremantle versus Adelaide. This is a good game, I reckon. Really good game between two evenly, relatively evenly ranked sides. And Adelaide started the year as, you know, a genuine finals contender. Not many people were giving that same respect to Fremantle and probably justifiably so when you consider Adelaide's season last year was more impressive than Fremantle's. And prior to this, you know, the season starting, if you told me this fixture uh, was happening in Perth, I'd say Adelaide were a red hot chance, but the faith has dwindled a little bit. And at the same time, Fremantle have been fairly impressive. Beat the Brisbane Lions, you know, had a uh, run of like eight eight out of nine goals, I think. And then against North, they kicked nine goals in a row. So they're overcoming slow starts. To what extent that is going to be a trend, I have no idea, obviously. But it's clearly resilience there. There's some confidence there. The momentum there as well. Conversely, Adelaide does not have that same momentum. They were quite poor for three quarters against the Gold Coast. Suns nearly came back and won. And then they took that form into their clash with Geelong. And, um, you know, I don't think it was a bad It was a bad performance at all. I think Geelong is going to be a very tough opponent and generally play well regardless of venue. So we're still getting a read on Adelaide. Optus Stadium, though, home ground advantage. I think I'm going to tip Fremantle here. I don't think Adelaide played poorly at this ground. Um, they played there against West Coast and sh- upset West Coast at their home ground. But in all seriousness, I think think I'm going to trust Fremantle here, but I think it will be a good game. Uh, I think it's Good Friday, isn't it? Yeah, 15 points the Dockers will win by. Essendon versus St Kilda. This one has potential upset vibes, only because I feel like Essendon, a little bit hard to read, but let's give credit to St Kilda. So St Kilda, first of all, I think has had a pretty good start to the year. Um, A a narrow loss at GMHBA to a Geelong side that is clearly not bad. Like they're pretty, they're looking like a finals quality side. And I think they only lost that game by a goal, right? And then took that form into to Collingwood and were too good for the, the reigning premiers. Obviously, form slump, um, we have to factor that in, of course. But St Kilda's youth, in particular, is starting to do more of the heavy lifting week in, week out. And they look ominous and they're dangerous on the outside and defensively sound. So, Marvel Stadium, I do think they start favourites comfortably here. Essendon, though, I, I think we should give some respect to. I think their round one performance against Hawthorne was solid. I thought, if anything, I was more impressed by their fight. I've got lost to Sydney. I thought they hung in there fairly well in a game where, you know, Sydney were considered massive favourites, to be honest. They're looking like one of the form sides of the comp, Sydney. I think Essendon obviously considered a few late goals and Sydney are a better side, but I think it was a good performance. They are going to lose. I think both of these teams are going to lose some players, though. Peter Wright's going to miss through suspension. St Kilda's lost three players from memory. Mason Wood, Max King, Liam Henry. <sighs> I'm still going to tip the Saints here. I think the Saints are good enough to be able to cover those losses. You know, Essendon should be able to cover without Peter Wright. Like, they did it a fair bit last year from memory. Either way, I'm going to tip the side that I think is better. 
but I think it'll be okay in terms of margin. I think 22 points to the Saints. Port Adelaide versus Melbourne. This could be game of the round, I would have I would have thought. Fifth versus sixth on the ladder. I think it was third versus fourth on last year's ladder as well. And uh, both sides tracking okay to start the year. Port Adelaide have had, you know, an easy win first up against the Eagles and then beat a plucky Richmond at the MCG. And that's probably a fairly good win, to be honest. I just think... Richmond at the moment, it's, it's kind of a danger game. Port Adelaide should still have won the game, but, you know, it was a competitive outing. So that will prepare them well for the Ds, and I think the Ds are looking in pretty good touch as well. Obviously, for opening round loss to the Swans, we have seen Sydney be really good since, and in that game as well. And then they've beaten up on the Bulldogs and Hawthorne, and they look in pretty decent shape. So I think this will be a good game. I think both of these sides have done nothing to suggest to us that they're not going to be good teams this year. Home ground advantage is probably the thing that I have splitting it here. So I'm going to tip the power to win this game by 14 points. But I do think it could go, could go either way. I'm not writing off the D's by any stretch, but home side will win with the home crowd 14 points. All right, now we've got a game that I think everyone will be tuning into, the Western Bulldogs versus the West Coast Eagles at Marvel. Um, West Coast won this fixture last year, bro, so let's obviously tip them. So the Bulldogs, I think, you know, their the win against the Gold Coast Suns was definitely a bit of a statement um, in terms of, you know, there was a bit of doubt around them. I think a little bit unfairly for losing to Melbourne in the way that they did, um, but they made a statement by coming back and beating a team where I thought Gold Coast, with their form, was going to give them at least a good fright. I did tip the Bulldogs. But to win this game by eight goals or whatever it was in the end, Cody Waitman kicks six, a number of other young stars play well. Suggests to me that there's momentum there, there's form, a bit more confidence. Um, and I feel like as well, the fact that the Eagles beat them there last year is almost going to work against us. They're going to work. They're going to make sure that doesn't happen again. I feel like both sides will probably field, be fielding fairly different lineups to that day as well. Um, I can't see the dogs losing this again. They'll certainly be analyzing footage and looking at the ways West Coast were able to pick them apart last year. And um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm hopeful for a competitive game, but if we're being honest, uh, I'd say 36 points. Um, you know, it could be more, could be less. If we have a good day, that's about right. Factor in that, in that as well is West Coast, for some reason, play well at Marvel. Um, so that's my optimism of why it's not 10 goals. I, I'm hoping we have a good day and show some good signs. Richmond versus Sydney. This one... Um, it, it could be plucky again. Like Richmond have been fairly competitive in their games. Okay, bad start against the Gold Coast Suns. They came back. They ended up losing. Really good against Carlton. Showed some ticker. Um, injuries starting to mount, no doubt. Presti's out for a while now. Um, we already knew that. But there's some adversity they're building for Richmond. And I think it's going to make it tough against one of the best teams in the competition right now. But, you know, plucky again against Port Adelaide. I would argue Sydney's probably a tougher opponent than Port. And I think Sydney also tend to play the G a little bit better than Port. I'm going off the top of my head with that one. Um, but I think Sydney, I remember them having some good wins at the G over the last three years, obviously, save for the 2022 Grand Final. I think Richmond could do enough to make this game interesting, keep it kind of close for parts, and then Sydney will kick away. I've got no reason to doubt Sydney here, um, and that's not brutally being harsh on Richmond. I just think the Swans will be too good. I'll say 32 points. And I think this game is Easter Monday. Hawthorne versus Geelong at the MZG. Uh, you know, prior to this season, I think a lot of people would have thought this game would be real hot in the sense that Hawthorne are on the up and uh, their youth is exciting and uh, they might lift to the occasion and be able to topple a Geelong that is declining hard. But that has not been the narrative in the opening three weeks of this season. Hawthorne have, you know, obviously got some backline issues. I think, you know, that probably doesn't fully explain the fact that their midfield hasn't fired, you know, Melbourne's midfield completely dismantled them. And they are a young side. I'm not not uh, trying to harsh their mellow. Now, Geelong's midfield is probably also, on paper, not that strong, um, with Dangerfield potentially missing. I don't know the extent of that. But assuming he's out, I think uh, that opens the door, Hawthorne, to at least, you know, even the battle a little bit in that respect. But I think around the ground and the way that Geelong play, the veterans, uh, Tom Stewart was amazing last week, Tom Hawkins as well. I think this could be a really tough day for Hawthorne, potentially. I will tip... The Cats by 44 points. They're looking good. They were good against the Crows in particular. Um, and then St Kilda as well. Gave them a bit of a fright, but Geelong were you know, too good. That's a tough game. So tough fixture so far. Geelong have ticked a couple of boxes. They're looking all right despite a couple of key injuries. I will say Geelong win this by 44 points. So that is the conclusion of round three. Um, as we look at the ladder, uh, again, it's, it's a little bit hard to tell if the ladder means anything, not only because it's early in the season, but we're still having buys. Obviously, there was a couple of buys this week in Gold Coast and GWS. So tomorrow, I do have my power rankings coming out, trying to make sense of what we've seen so far and rank it in a fairly logical order. Uh, but if you look at it here, you know, Geelong to the top four, 
Fremantle fifth, Carlton sixth. The two Sydney sides are the top two teams. That's probably consistent with my belief. Hawthorne, West Coast, and North Melbourne, and Richmond bottom four. That probably looks about right. Obviously, we expect Collingwood to improve. I expect Adelaide to improve. Um, but that is all I've got for you today, guys. Let me know in the comments anything you agree with or disagree with. Um, upset of the round. I have a funny feeling we might see a really good Essendon performance this week, uh, but that is not because I don't rate St Kilda. Essendon capable of that, and I, I've liked what I've seen, but St Kilda should be too good for them. Um, so no real obvious upset of the round as such, but that's probably my nomination. And also nominate your game of the round. Uh, obviously with the grand final replay, um, but I think Port Adelaide versus Melbourne is the one that is the most intriguing to shape the ladder. But look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for being subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.